Hello, hello! For those of you watching and you saw the title, the purpose of this video is mostly for me to play with this brush here today, but I'm doing uh, my makeup with the rest of the brushes as well, and of course I'll be talking about them as I go through them. So, yeah. No real plans for where the makeup is going to go, I just pulled a whole bunch of brushes, and for some reason the camera's not focusing. Okay. There we go. So I'm just going to do my makeup with the brushes shown. A lot of these you've seen before. Um, I put the Z8 in here specifically because somebody wanted to see it. So I'm kind of making this video to show um, pretty much how big it is. Because I told them it was a powder, a bronzer, and a blush brush. And they were kind of going, what? And then so that's why this brush is here. If you've been sort of following my Instagram, I've done a couple of short videos where I do more normal everyday makeup. That's where I do the makeup and I don't use quite so many brushes because normally I don't. The purpose of these YouTube videos is to go in my brush catalog, which is like a giant Excel sheet I'm doing that has links to all the brush demonstrations, whether the video or on Instagram. So that's what I've been slowly, slowly, slowly building up these uh, library of videos for it's for the brush catalog excel sheet so i'm using the sonia g i'll show the brush after i'm done with it just doing my foundation really quickly i want to get this first layer on while my sunscreen is still a little bit tacky so then it has a little bit more glide And if you're wondering about the different angle, I'm filming from the floor today because I'm sitting on my Bosa ball and then I just have a pop-up stand desk. I'm tired of sitting in a chair. So this is the Sonia G base one. Uh, I used it a couple of videos back in the Sonia G, um, the series of Sonia G videos and Beautylish videos. It's about time I washed this brush. This is probably my fifth use of it. And then that's why it's looking really stained. But the stuff washes right out. Even though it looks really gross, it'll go back to white. Okay. Also having worn makeup in a couple days. So I feel like I it's been forever. And the conceal. A couple of spots that have popped up. I'm gonna go in with this brush again and just kind of tap and lightly buff it out. I don't have to be quite as meticulous about buffing out my concealer because it's the same shade as my foundation. So I never realized until I went home over the weekend and then I was doing my sister's makeup like oh I have to work a lot harder to blend because her concealer is different from her foundation. Normally if I do makeup on other people I just grab one of my Kevin Kwan skin enhancer, essential skin enhancers and use the same shade for concealer and foundation. That was the foundation brush. Um, for those of you who haven't seen this before, it's a mid-sized brush. So it is going to take you a little longer to do. You don't just like slap it on like I would with the Fupa 01. But because of the size, you can also do blush, cream blush with it. I'm pretty sure I've demonstrated that before. Next up, I'm using the Chukohodo T3. Uh, no, not T, sorry, KZ. <laughs> KZ03, this is a cheek slash highlight brush. In my opinion, it's a little big to be a highlight brush, unless I mean like highlighting area of effect, which is totally plausible. If you're like highlighting your entire like this V zone, then yes, it's highlight brush. But in the normal sense of a highlight brush by Western makeup standards, not really. So I really like this one as a set brush because of that point, I just kind of stick it in this and then brush it over and just go over the rest of my face. 
And then again, I have a video on <coughs> all the Coven Squirrel brushes. And I'm thinking of refilming that video because it was done before I got this new webcam attachment. So the quality on that one's pretty poor. And I also didn't have the best lighting setup. I mean, it's still just natural light, but the area of the house I was filming in did not have great lighting. So I'm thinking of refilming that video in a more condensed version, but leaving the old one up because I am not doing all those brush washes and comparisons again. That was a lot of brush washing to do. So that's setting powder applied. And I'm going to go in with this Chikuhodo Z8 for bronzer because I'm getting a little pale. This is their, the Z8 is the cheek brush. This is the bigger sister to the Z4, which is the cheek slash highlight brush. But I really like this one because you can use it this way and still get quite good control for how much blush you apply. And of course, if you use the big flat, you've got a nice big area for powder. Sweep it really quickly all across everywhere. I'm going to be using it for bronzer today. I'm going to be using this slightly warm shade. I'm going to be picking up a little bit of loose powder from the puff to dilute it and then applying it. So I'm actually going to apply starting from the forehead. And then across I'm gonna hit this part, lower part of my face. Pick up a little bit more. And then it blends really, really easily. Like I really don't really have to do much more than go back and forth over a couple times. I just like brushing it over my face extra because it feels nice. Okay. And then I'm going to go in with the brush I'm most excited about. This is the Koyudo Kolinsky um, Radin face brush. This is, so the Radin part refers to this mother of pearl inlay in the handle. And then the part I'm most, ex <clears throat> most excited about is the Kolinsky hair on the top. I'm gonna go in with blush for that. And then I'm gonna use this sort of mauve color just pressing it like I usually do. And I have to say, I'm pretty blown away. I know I like Kolinsky, but I didn't think I would like it in such a big brush. I was kind of afraid it'd be too stiff, but it's amazing. Like this is a, I think it's a $500 brush and I'm thinking, oh my God, I might need another one. Like I've never had this reaction to a, br a face brush before. Well, I've had it to a few. But this one's just amazing, and I think I might need another one. So it's definitely going on my Christmas wish list, and I'm going to see if anybody is crazy enough to buy it for me. <laughs> Did I say crazy enough? Generous enough to indulge my whims. It's amazing. Like, I, I, it's kind of like a scaled-down version of the Hakuhodo. Uh, one um, J103. It has more spring, but it feels just as soft and silky as goat, but it glides better. So it has the... It's like better goat. And even though you expect weasel to be a little bit stiff, it's not at all, simply because the hairs are so long on this. So if the Hakodo 103 ever got an upgrade, it'd probably be made in this hair. Like it feels as silky as squirrel because goat still has a little bit more texture and a um, little bit more friction as it glides across the skin. But this feels like squirrel as it's gliding across the skin, but it has that resilience and firmness of goat. It's absolutely amazing. And then I think this face brush makes a pretty good cheek brush size for me anyways. So that's why I got I got it in the size I did. The cheek brush is 
slightly smaller, I think maybe like 20% smaller. But if I get another one, I think I'm good, definitely going to get another face brush and not a cheek brush. I'm going to apply a little bit more blush to the outer perimeter of my face. Now that I've turned my face around and looked a little bit more, I want a little bit more color out here. And it blends so effortlessly, partly due to the round shape and partly due to the fact that, well, Kalinsky. Enough said. Okay. I'm going to go in with highlighter now. This is the Sonia G Sculpt 3. And then this is probably the best highlight brush that I was a big fan of the Smashbox fan brush before they changed the natural hairline to synthetic hair. And this is a great replacement for it. It's thicker, it's stronger, it's more resilient, but it's still soft and I really love it. And then because of this fine, like here's a size comparison, because of this fine shape, I can also go down my nose and do pretty precise areas. And do my usual thing, why did my forehead? And of course this brush can also apply brush uh, brush can also apply blush if you use it like this with the side. Get more side coverage that way or area coverage. Next up I'm gonna use this brush from Shakuda. I did a haul on them a couple, oh my, I think it's actually been a couple months now. This is their angled face brush, and this is, the code is 820. I forget what the actual name for it is, but it's made of squirrel and it's super soft. I'm going to stick it here. And then brush up a little bit. Get on the other side. and then brush up to blend. One way I've actually discovered is a good way to use this brush is um, you load up, what's it called? You load up the powder on this end, kind of distribute it a bit and then go like this and it goes straight down if you want. Do the short side down, the long side up and go straight like that if you want a stronger contour, but that's not usually how I do my makeup. But playing around with it, I discovered that it was really good for that. Side of my nose a bit. Gonna do my temples as well. All right, um, I think for my lid color, I'm going to apply my lid color with this blending brush. This is also Squirrel. This is the 8, 8203 round, slightly tapered to a point. I would say medium sized, slightly on the larger side, but for the purposes of what I'm doing, it's, it's fine. So applying what would essentially be a transition shade. I always like to start with the tip pointed out and then drag it in to blend. And then follow up with a little bit of point shading on the outside because this gives it more intensity. And wrap a bit. It looks like I'm really jabbing into my eye. I just have a lot of loose skin there. <laughs> and then also because the bristles are squirrel, I don't feel anything. A little bit more. Uh, 
Okay, that's that brush. And really, if I wanted to stop here, all we, I, all I would do is add a shiny color and then call it done. But because I'm trying to show as many brushes as possible, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> this is um, a Hakuhodo Ogi. I forget the exact code for it right now. I'll put it in the description of the video. But this is this handle is from a limited edition set. But the brush head is available in their permanent line. This is Blue Squirrel, and I like to use this as both a lid brush as well as a detail eye brush, and I'll show you how I use this brush exactly in a second. I've really been enjoying them, um, partially because I picked brushes I'm pretty sure I would have liked. Like, there were a lot of brushes that I did skip, but I've been really liking the Shakuta brushes so far. Okay, I'm going to pick... Uh, <laughs> since I'm doing a little bit of a cooler outfit today... I'm gonna pick this sort of oystery gray color for my lid shade. And then, so I'm using the big part to just slap on the color. And then because of this shape, it just blends in right away. It's beautiful. And I'm going to use that tip here to kind of just define it a little bit. Not quite a cut crease, but you can kind of see right where the shine kind of ends against the transition color. And then I am going to... Let's see, how do I want to do this? I think I might have picked too many brushes. I think I can get this done with far fewer brushes than I thought. Okay, I'm going to use the side of the brush, so the blade of the brush. See how thin that gets? I'm going to pick up this color and use it to define slash line my eyes. Obviously, it's not going to be as sharp as a liquid or gel liner, but it does the job in a very soft manner, which I enjoy. So there's that. And then I'm going to use this, follow my, just below my lower lash line and go up and then give myself a slight wing. Just like that. So the Ogies are a tool that I think I really slept on. I haven't seen, or it might be because I'm not watching nearly as much YouTube as I used to, but I haven't seen any blog reviews or anything either on the Ogi brushes and how to use them. And I've really been enjoying this set ever since I got it. And I think I've had this since 2017. They're really great. And I think Hakuhodo is onto something because what this brush or what this brush shape, the Ogi shape allows is uh, it allows them to use a lot less hair, but still have a really multi-functional brush that works really well. And it's, it's actually a pretty genius shape. So I took out the wing a little bit too far on that one by accident. No problem. I'm going to take that blending brush again and do a little bit of erasing. that okay and I really okay I know I pulled these two brushes but I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them now <laughs> oh, okay Let's see do I have any darker colors to use not really hmm maybe I'll just intensify a little bit more oh well this is the Chukahodo Z10 pencil brush Comes to a nice soft point. This is also squirrel, and I'm just going to use this to highlight the inner corner, inner part of my eye. So let's see. I want to use this color. Again, super soft. I saw that Koyudo released a Fupa synthetics. I have not gotten any of them yet. I'm still playing catch up on brushes that I wanted to collect and hoard before they went away. So that's where I am with getting to the new brushes.
I'll probably only get a limited number of the fruit pot synthetics just to see if they're comparable to the old ones. But I'm still I'm still grieving over the loss of the old brushes. So I'm not gonna jump on those right away. I'm gonna take this blending brush again and I want decided I want this hollow part to be a little bit more dark and a little bit more defined. I'm sticking this here and then using the tip to define it as I bring it through. So you can see the difference here. Instead of one big area of shiny, it's a little more contoured and defined now. And that's the great part about tapered blending brushes like this one, the um, Akuhodo 142, I believe it was that I did the other day on my Instagram. Yes, the Akuhodo 142. I just like round tapered blending brushes like this in general. So you'll probably see a lot of those in my videos. <laughs> it's gonna do something with this. I am not sure this is the Koyudo Saibi, uh, Saibi Ko, <laughs> I wish. This is the Koyudo Saikoho Mizu Ame, Mizuga? No, Mizu, Mizu, Mizume Sakura Cherry Birch uh, small eye brush. So it's a very small pointed pencil and I think I was going to do something for dark shadow, which I don't have with me. Let's see. Hmm. This should work. I think I, my original intention was to go for black, but it didn't happen. Stick a little bit there. Stick a little bit there, yeah. That does make a difference. There, there. And we're set. Okay. Yes? Okay. Um... <laughs> Sorry, got thrown off a little bit. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of loose powder to clean out the fallout under my eyes. And I don't know why my camera is unfocused again. Let's let's try that again. Okay. Okay, and then because of that strength of the bristles, it's really good at flicking away stuff. And I'm gonna go back in with the bronzer brush just a little bit. Kind of using this as a bit of a finishing brush right now. The putting the loose powder on kind of took away too much color and put too much light back in. So I'm just going with the bronzer brush. And, and it doesn't, because it's squirreled so soft, it doesn't disturb the blush and highlight I've already laid down. And I think I'm going to just finish off with brows, mascara, and then call it a day. Ahead of schedule. Wow, I'm so proud of myself. Let's see. Planning to take advantage of the CD Japan 1111 coupon. Um... I'm still deciding on that, honestly, because uh, I just got the Kalinsky brushes a day and a half ago. So I'm still kind of in the honeymoon phase with my new brushes. So it's kind of a little early for me to start thinking about a haul. Though I guess if I want to use that coupon, I'd have to use it by tonight. There's always a perpetual list of brushes in my bookmarks to get. So we'll see. And I guess the $11 off essentially that they give you if the coupon would be really nice if I <laughs> really did get another Kalinsky face brush. It's so minimal, but hey, it's better than nothing. Like I'm seriously, seriously considering getting another face brush right now if they're still in stock or available. Let's see, you never get to buy new brushes. You always buy ones that are discontinued or already discontinued. I know, I'm always running behind the train. 
I know that feeling. Suku makeup. I actually don't own any Suku makeup. I've played with them before because um, some of my friends have the eye palettes, but there's just something about them. Maybe it's because they're in quads and I'm not a quad person normally, unless it's something very specific. Let's see. I do like the Suku brow pencil, but I like the Shu Uramura one more. I say that as I'm about to use the A2 House one. I'm just using this one until it's used up. I recently got a, the Shu Uramura hard formula pencil. It's taken me so long to get it, and I really, really like it. So I'm not sure if I would start using the Suku brow powder or the brow pencil. That's just a really long way of saying no, I don't own anything Suku except the cheek brush, and that's literally the only thing I own, the cheek brush. On the other hand, there's a blog that I really like to follow, Delena at, um, of Toys & Co. Uh, her URL is a little dabble, a little dab into makeup.blogspot.com. She has pretty much, I. It seems like she has pretty much every Suku lipstick and eyeshadow under the sun. So I would consult her blog if you're um, interested in them. And then she also does a lot of Lunasol addiction and uh, like just a lot of Japanese brands in general. So um, I'll try to remember to link her blog in the, in the description or I'll just find it right now after I'm done with my eyebrows and throw it at you. But... She's got quite the archive, and it's really impressive. Let's see if I should. I should probably have her thing hot linked, but I just usually get her stuff through email. Let's see if I can find it. Aha! Found it. Okay, I'll throw her link into the chat box. Here you go. Sonia G is also pretty responsive on Instagram, so maybe ask her. I think she has a pretty extensive collection of Suku as well. So another resource. But if you prefer to kind of narrow things down before you ask, um, definitely check out that blog. My hair keeps trying to get some mascara on it too. Sorry for the silence. I'm not the best at mascara and multitasking. Actually, I'm just not the best at mascara, period. You'd think I'd be better at it after applying it almost every day, but no. Probably should look up videos on better application techniques or tricks to do it, but I could just keep doing it the same old way. Okay. Liking how one brow looks so much higher than the other. Let's see. Do, 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 do. When is CD Japan having their 20% brush discount event? They've had it in the past. Is it a yearly recurring? I don't think it's a yearly reoccurring event. Um, but if you put in a request, it might be. They CD Japan is definitely very responsive to their consumers. So if you ask them and if, if enough people ask, they may make it a annual event, but it's also dependent on the contracts they have with the brush brands that they sell. They might not be authorized to hold brush sales like that. So it, it really depends. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna fake the other eyebrow a little bit and make it higher. Sometimes one eyebrow is thicker, has more hair, higher than the other. This is one of those weeks where they're wonky. Actually, they're always wonky. Okay, and that's pretty much the makeup. So I'm just gonna be cleaning up, answering questions. Uh, let me review the brushes that I used real quickly and then I'll get back to the comments. So Sonia G foundation brush, base one, medium sized, round, good for foundation and blush. The KZ3, oh, I forgot to mention, this is Cousin Squirrel, also known as Red Squirrel. This is by Chikuhodo. And this is their cheek slash highlight brush, but I definitely use it as a cheek brush slash, slash face brush. Round, tapered, pretty nice, super soft. And as you saw when I was using it, super flexible. This is the Chikuhodo Z8 cheek brush paddle, pretty fat paddle. Um, you can use it for blush, turn it for powder, bronzer, finishing as well. And then this is my new baby, the Koyudo Radin uh, Kalinsky Face Brush. I use it for blush today. Round, also tapered. You're, you're really seeing a <coughs> you're really seeing a theme slash trend here. I don't have COVID. It's just we turned on the heater for the first time last night, and the vents are not clean. <laughs> this is the Shakuda. Oh, jeez, what is it? Eight Ten um, angled face brush. Use this for contouring the cheek nose and the sort of eye socket ish and temple this oh i missed a face brush this is a sonia g sculpts three this was used for highlight and then this is the 832 shakuda tapered eye brush used it for pretty much anything that looks sort of warm and brown on my eyes a little bit of a wrap around this is, oh, I didn't get to using the brow brush, did I? Did I? No, I think I did, maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> Anyways, this is the brow brush. I've been using it mostly with the a brow powder. This is probably the first time I've pulled it out trying to blend a eyebrow pencil with it. I don't remember if I actually used it for the eyebrow pencil or not. This is the Chikuhodo Z10 pencil brush. I used it for the inner corner today, but of course you can use it for outer corner, under eye as well. This is the Koyudo um, Cherry Birch Small Eye Brush, round little pointed thing. This one is now discontinued, but it's been revived in the Yoshiki line. They look exactly the same, except for they've been engraved with Yoshiki on the other side of the Koyudo logo. And then this is the Sum Hakuhodo Blue Squirrel Ogi, Ogi Maru Brush. This is the most unique brush you've probably ever seen, but if you watch me use it, it's super versatile as a lid brush and also as a detail brush. This little wing of eyeshadow you saw, you see going on here was done with this brush, not the pencil brush. So really super brush that I'm surprised I haven't shown on video until now. And I think I'll just answer the comments, maybe do another coat of mascara and then pop off. So. You are in love with Koyudo BP004. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Yeah, I was really excited to see some of the Koyudo brushes come back in stock. And apparently um, some of the brushes like the 016 are going to be continued to be made. But unfortunately, they're one of their favorite brushes of mine, the BP009, which is a big squirrel round loose fluffy face brush is not going to be continued <laughs> what's my opinion on the sonia g brush holder i think that it's really well thought out um it's not what i'm looking for which is why i don't own it i prefer obviously if you see my you see my brush bar in every video i prefer that thing because it holds the brushes separate i really don't like it when brushes touch so that's what I think of the brush holder. It's super nice. It's really thoughtful because of the six, um, yeah, six compartments. Yeah, that you can adjust. And it's great that it can also be used as the 
as a office tool holder, but it's personally not for me. The fact that it's walnut wood does not hurt because things are nice when they're in wood. Let's see. Colin, why do, okay, so the reason why I like Kolinsky over the Cosm Score brush. So to explain, I was actually not expecting the Kolinsky brush to feel the way it does. So if you're familiar with Kolinsky eye brushes, they tend to feel very um, firm, almost stiff. So that's in part because of how short they are. So the shorter something feels, so like, let's tie my hair into a ponytail. When it's long, like this, it's super floppy and flexible. However, when it's short like this, obviously there's a lot more resistance to it. Same thing if I make it even shorter, a lot more resistance. So with the eye brushes, I'm short, I'm used to this short high resistance. And for some reason, that's what I was also expecting for a much longer face brush. So when the longer hairs hit my skin, I was like, oh my God, this is a lot softer, more flexible and silky than I thought it'd be. So let me break that down, a lot softer. So there's a lot of definitions for softer. So the definition of softer was it's not pokey. No surprises there because the hairs are naturally tapered in the Japanese fude brushes. So I wasn't expecting it to be pokey. That was fine. But it was like the flexibility and the sort of the spring back is very reminiscent of a dense goat brush, but Goat, in comparison to squirrel, still has more friction when you glide the hair across the skin. The glide of this brush feels very much like a blue squirrel brush. Um, I say blue squirrel because blue squirrel has, still has a little bit more texture than, uh, say, Kazan red squirrel. And still more texture yet than, um, what's the other one? White Canadian squirrel. Like, it kind of depends. So like white Canadian squirrel tends to be less draggy than regular Canadian squirrel. And white Canadian squirrel is kind of on par with blue and gray squirrel in terms of the drag. And then I'm, I know I'm missing a squirrel type. And then red squirrel is probably the softest and has the least drag. But softness wise, if we're talking about flexibility, you have a lot more flexibility and I'm pressing with approximately the same pressure. You have a lot more flexibility with the squirrel, but you also have a lot less resistance. So what I really liked about this brush was a combination of the fact that it was soft, not pokey, the fact that it had this incredible spring back, and the fact that it just glides across the skin with very little friction. Like the least frictiony hair you can get is probably Saibi Coho. And um, Saibi Coho is absurdly expensive, but so is Kolinsky. However, because it has that spring back, I would absolutely, if I had to choose between two brushes, I would absolutely get the uh, Kolinsky brush over a Saibi Coho brush. And also because durability. I, did I explain that well? I hope I kind of did. Maybe I'm just too much of a Kalinsky fangirl and I'm just reverse engineering reasons for why I like it so much, but I do. Like, to give you a reference, I have a lot of other brushes that are similar, not a lot of other, I have a couple, handful of other brushes that are similar in price, um, namely the Koyudo, the Super Saibi Koho powder brush, the uh, Subokawa Mohitsu Suki face brush, which is the Koyomo Sai Koho hair. And I also have a uh, powder brush in white Canadian squirrel. Those brushes I just named off are all about the same price and they're all very nice, but I didn't go, oh my God, I love this. I might need another one the moment I put it to my face. Let's see. Any preference for brows? Water Badger brand? Up until uh, I got this brush, I might have said that Water Badger, the Shu Uramura 6B Water Badger was my favorite, but because of the way I do my brows, it tends to be a softer way. I do like this one a lot because it's a mix of pony 
and badger and then it gives a lot more of a soft finish because i'm not drawing hairs on when i do my brows i just kind of lay down product so that it mimics the shadow cast by hairs so that's why i prefer this brush now like this is probably my favorite brow brush kind of sad i also didn't do my brows a lot in the past yes the coyote brush is beautiful Let's see. Okay, I'm glad you like the Sonia G brush holder so much. You should tell her. I think she really enjoys hearing people tell her how much they love her stuff. Do I own the O Yoshiki powder brush? Is it soft as a fuwa fuwa like the Hakuhoyo? Okay, so the Yoshiki powder brush is the same as the face brush from the Cherry Birch line. As I'm told, they're exactly the same. So if we're going off exactly the same then yes, it is as soft as this Fuwa Fuwa. It's a little bit different size-wise in terms of flair and like actual size, but it is very nice. Um, I would say that hmm, compared to Hakuhodo, the hair is about the same. Like if you, if I was blind and blinded and then had the brush tested on both cheeks, I wouldn't be able to tell which one was Hakuhodo and which one was uh, the Koyudo. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Wow. <laughs> wow, you really like that brush holder. Uh, thoughts on the Chikuhodo holiday brushes? Um, I personally am going to skip them because they have a lot of shapes that I already have. And if there was a brush that I was going to get, out of that, it'd be the large eye brush in the red set. I think it's the Abe set. Uh, but as the moderator of our food day at Reddit uh, found, the measurements and the fact that it's made of gray squirrel, it's pretty similar to the Chikohodu G3, which I personally don't own, which is a large gray squirrel eye brush. That's the only one I'd really be interested in. Everything else I think is kind of already duped. The sets are really aimed at people who are who don't have an insane amount of brushes. And if I was to get one of the two sets as a starter, I would get the bigger set, the red set. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Would you have put the money from the Cousin set into getting the Kolinsky face brush if I would? Yes. And I say that because the Kolinsky face brushes are lim are a limited run and the Kazan set are a permanent line here to stay. I would eventually get the Kazan set, but if they had come out at the same time, I would have gotten the Kolinsky face brush. You have a similar brush holder and the brushes in rotations, pretty practical to store them. You prefer something like the Sonia G brush holder. Yeah. So for brushes in rotation, brushes that I'm using, I stick them in here and then just like grab the tray, do my face in like that mirror, that mirror, that mirror, like whichever mirror I choose to use it in. Sometimes I do my makeup standing up, but this makes it pretty easy to just grab and do my makeup anywhere. As for storing my brushes, I don't like storing in an open container like that. So for me, the Sonia G brush holder would be to hold brushes that are currently in rotation. If brushes weren't in rotation being used, I keep them in a covered box. Somebody a uh, handful of videos ago caught me using the humidor um, or a cigar holder, which is what I use to hold my brushes. I use it for a variety of reasons because um, those boxes are made of cedar, so they're bug repellent and they also have a built-in humidity control system. So that's the other reason why I keep it in those boxes, mostly for the humidity control and the bug repellent. So, yeah. Brush bar has been out of stock for many months. Oh, uh, I really don't like recommending that people get like the knockoff, the dupes, because I'm pretty sure you you can go on Amazon or AliExpress or anything and find a lot of brush things like this, but I really would encourage people to get the get it from the company that made the concept because they deserve the credit for it. I understand if it's not in your budget to do so or if you're too impatient to wait for it to come back. But after what happened to Benjabel, like they're the one who created the brush tree where you, they like kind of stick the brush through and they hang upside down to dry or you just like stick them right side up to store. 
And then there were all the super cheap copycats. Well, Benjabel wasn't able to compete with the copycats and they are out of business. So at the time I was one of the people who bought the copycats, the cheap copycats. And now I feel kind of bad about it because everybody making a decision voting with their wallet does matter. You love the Hakuhoda goat hair and love the round shape of the Koyudo. So maybe the best of both worlds. I think if you're thinking of the Hakuhodo J104, they are very, very different. So the, even though they're both that round domed powder shape, the J104 is a lot looser. It's a lot less densely packed into the ferrule and it's also not crimped. So it, it has a very different feel. The Hakuhodo is still pretty firm because it's still pretty dense. It's just not quite as dense as the Koyudo Yoshiki face brush. For a Christmas wish list, do I think the Koyudo Echizen Kabuki and Koyomo Saibiko, Saibiko? No, Koyomo only has Saiko. Uh, Saiko cheek brush in the deep red shiny one would be a good choice. I'm not sure of which Echizen Kabuki you're talking about. Are you talking about the. If you could link it in the comments. Um, that would be really appreciated. I do own the Koyumo Sai um, Koho face brush. And the only cheek brushes I own are the Otsutsuho in the pink pearl and the Sokoho in the red Hana handle. And honestly, I really... So let me grab those brushes and explain why I got them the way I did. Okay, so personally, I prefer balance. So this is the Koyomo Suki. This is Suki, yeah, this is a Suki. This is the face brush, this is Saikoho. This is the Hana something, the, one of the Hana handles. The Hana handle is the short chubby round handle. And this is the cheek brush. I got the face brush in the longer handle. This is Saikoho. And this is Sokoho in a shorter handle because I like the proportions better. I thought it would have looked funny if it was the big head on the short handle or vice versa, which is the reason why I got them the way I did. However, if you really want a Saikoho cheek brush on the Suki handle, go for it. It's a great brush. But honestly, I'm quite happy with the Sokoho. I have never wished that, oh, I wish this uh, head was in Saikoho because their Sokoho is already pretty, pretty damn nice. All right. I'm glad the I'm glad the brush bar will be back. And then um are you talking about this? Like the Echizen, like this sort of decoration for your kabuki brush? This the Hana is in Psychoho? Oh. I was always under the impression that the Hana was that the Hana was in Sokoho and this was in Saikoho. I could I could definitely be wrong since it's been a few years since I've had them and I haven't really looked at the information since. In addition to using the brush bar, do you have any recommendations for storing S series brushes to keep the um, I lay them horizontally. That's pretty much my special storing method for the S series. I now that you mention it, I've never stored them upright in a cup. Uh, if I have stored them upright, it's always been in well, either the brush bar or one of their special hexag hexagonal no it's no octagonal one they're like special acrylic octagonal brush stands because they have a little like disc of silicone at the end that's like cushy so when you drop it it kind of like almost bounces a little bit but mm, those are safe so if you want to display them that's a good way to display them let's grab it right now
And then I have a hard stop in five minutes, so this will probably be the last thing I do. So like for a brush like this, because the handles are lacquered, I would probably never store them in a normal cup if I was to display them. So I'd use something like this. This is from Hakuhodo, octagonal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I don't know if you can see that disc at the bottom there. It's, can you hear it? Yeah, so like this is a handle against the acrylic. But if I tap it on the bottom, that gel cushion really takes care of it and doesn't allow it to chip. And then same goes for if I was to store one of these brushes or like, uh, and then the thing with the flat bottom handle is they don't really stand up. They do get sticky once in a while, so you do have to wash them. You, you take like tweezers, you like pull them out and then you wash them, dry them, stick them back in because they do collect dust. Let's see. No, like, this. oh, small kabuki. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> I mean, go for it. If that's your if that's your dream, a psycho Hana brush, go for it. I'd be I'd be I'd love to see it. We've had the S one oh four, but as you as I said, the, the, the as you said, it's not that dense. Yeah, it really does flare out. Looking for something dense and shorter with shorter round hair. So I think in that case, you really will enjoy the um, Koyudo Yoshiki face brush more. Okay, you're welcome. And then, let's see, anything else I can think of? Not really, no. Yeah. So I think I'll just call this video done here. I hope you enjoyed and have a great rest of your day. Bye.